Jesus was a rock star. Good morning or good evening, good afternoon, whatever it might be, boys and girls, friends and family, everybody. So good to not see you today. And uh, so I, I, I'm doing this um, how to study the Bible series because I wanted to do a, a, a format that would communicate better online. Plus, I think our live stream didn't work very well those weeks. Our internet got really bad in there. And so this is part one of three parts of, uh, of how to study your Bible. And so I thought it was so important. It might even be something that I want to send out uh, to people who first come to the church and, and that kind of thing. So that, uh, that is how that is. But it's going to be casual. Don't expect too much uh, spit and polish. Like right now, I'm going to cough. Now I'm back, and I'm not going to edit that out. So this that's how, how this is, and if you want better, you can just go to Hillsong or something like that, and uh, that would be how we do this. Uh, but we are, I, I, I love the Word of God, and it is so important. And so the first part, we're going to how to study the Bible. Next week, we're going to how to ask deeper questions about the Bible. The week after that, I'm going to tell you why I need to believe the Bible is the absolute, infallible Word of God. And uh, that's so fundamental and so central to who I am as a Christian, what we preach at church. And at The Rock, uh, our motto is you can belong before you believe. But I always get in there whenever I'm talking to anybody about the churches, we are a Bible-believing church and I preach the word. Now, you can disagree with that and hopefully we can stay friends if you don't believe the Bible. I think you're wrong. OK, uh, and you think I'm wrong, but I can still love you and, and respect you and, and all that kind of stuff. So I believe the Bible is absolutely the word of God, the absolute truth. If uh, and I'm going to go through some some types of online Bibles and some different things. And so we're going to look at some scripture today. <clears throat> but we're also going to um, we're gonna study together and a little bit deeper than maybe you would be for an entry level person. And so if you only get a one Bible app on your phone, this should be the one. It's the Bible app. Um, and it is the first one that tends to come up when you are, uh, when you are doing things. And this is just With a little whole heart, commercial for the Bible app. Thee. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Blessed art thou, O Lord. I will not forget thy word. Now... The Bible is an app. Download so, boom, the Bible app, an extra one, U version. Um, Bible app is also what it's called. It, is, it was the first one to do lots of free Bibles uh, years ago. It, it's really handy because it'll do things like this that my, my daughter and um, my wife, they interact with, they're doing devotions and things on the, on the Bible app. And so, this has showed up in mine. Apparently, I'm also linked up with my daughter in this Bible app. So, I guess that's a good thing. <clears throat> but she highlighted this in her Bible, and then it showed up in my notes. Um, now, for one step more intense, a uh, little less, um, the Bible app has thousands, like 30,000 or some crazy thing, Bible reading plans. So if you're doing a reading plan, that's the best one. This is the one I use, the Logos Bible Study mobile app. Um, and this is on my computer. They also, if you, if you search Study Bible Logos, uh, you can get it on your phone. But this, um, this is what I look at when I am doing my, my Bible study and things. And, and I got to, okay, so how, today, how to study the Bible, Rock Church. There's the random dip method. You're going to start studying the Bible, the random dip method. That is when you come and you, and you put your finger in the Bible and, and you just hope for something good. Uh, you know, for instance, you might put your finger in the Bible and it says Judas hung himself and then you come and you put your finger in the bible and it says go and do likewise yeah you probably don't want to do that um that's a random dip method it, it can be kind of risky you know for instance uh you might do it one day and put your finger in the bible and then you you get to uh ezekiel says eat food as you would a barley cake make it inside of the people using human excrement so it's probably not a word from the lord for you i hope it's not a word from the lord from you <clears throat> but we're going to be taking a look at Philemon, or Philemon, uh, depending upon which scholar you are happening to listen to that day. And this is my old study Bible. I, the, 
my first real pay paycheck that I got at Little Caesars Pizza. I got that paycheck, and uh, and uh, and uh, and, I, and I, this was a ninety dollar Bible, a giant print I could write in it. And to be honest with you, I don't use this anymore because my computer is just so fast and I can get so much more information and uh, it's easier to find again. Um, but boy, uh, if you can't, if your Bible is so nice, you can't write in it. Like John Peterson used to tell me, you got to throw that Bible away and get one you can write in. Uh, this is not to be a museum piece. So how do you study the Bible? Uh, well, we're, we want to know the how, where, and the how, uh, and the how that happened. You got to get a translation that you understand, understand the context, read it slowly and ask questions, and finally pray to God to speak to you, and here's most important, and apply uh, what he shows you. Uh, so that is probably the most important part uh, of that. So uh, let's keep on going here. Uh, Philemon, uh, maybe you just read this out loud with me, if you would, wherever you're at, just kind of read this out loud with me. Philemon, uh, verses 7 and 8, it says, For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, thou I might much bold, be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee, which what is convenient. Are you blessed? I hope you're blessed. You should be blessed. Uh, actually, uh, here it is in the uh, New Living Translation of the Bible. For your love has given me much joy and comfort, my brother. For your kindness has often refreshed the hearts of God's people. And this is why you should have a, 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 um, a Bible version that you understand. It goes on in verse 8. It says, that's why I'm boldly asking a favor of you. I could demand it of you in Christ because uh, I have the right to do so. So number one, choose a translation that you understand. Um, now, what about all these different Bible translations and things? Um, and let's, let's see here. I'm going to keep on going. I wish I, I had my notes pages up, but that's okay. Um, this incredible book, the Bible, it's a collection of 66 different books written in three different languages, Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, across three continents over a 1,500-year time period, 40 different authors. They were shepherds, they were farmers, they were kings, they were priests, they were normal people. They're all kinds of different sorts of people. So this, you have this book <clears throat> that is actually a library in and of itself um, with all these different kinds of writings. So 66, and they're all different. They're prophecies and letters and laws, but they all come together. And this is what makes the Bible so amazing. It is one cohesive story through the whole thing that we get to see God's plan for man is in, in the story of Adam and Eve uh, in Genesis all the way to the end of the book where we get to see the end come and the new Jerusalem, the new heaven, the new earth, and we all get our shiny stones and dressed in white, all that stuff. This whole book is one story, um, but it is all of these different things. And so uh, this uh, in the King James Version, um, you say, look at that, for a great joy, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by the brother. And I want to show this to you just so you can see why we have different um, translations of the Bible. In ancient Hebrew, your bowels, uh, your stomach and intestines, was where it was the seat of your personhood, okay? <clears throat> in other words, it was uh, you felt your emotions there. And you can see that. Now, this is uh, um, a little bit deeper Bible study. If you were, it's called an interlinear Bible. We can look at the actual Greek words. Um, but compassion, bowels, and it gives you some intestines is what that word actually means. But you and me, we don't look at it that way. Uh, we think of the center of our being and where we feel our emotions to be in our heart. And so what Paul is, is saying here, if we go back again, uh, to the actual verse, there it is. Um, your love has given me much joy and comfort, my brother, and your kindness refreshes my heart, the hearts of God's people. And so, in so they translators looked at that and they said, you know what? To modern readers, heart is going to make more sense than bowels. And so, why do we have all of these different translations? Because language is always changing. Um, and different translations take different philosophical approaches to translating the Bible. <clears throat> My wife is from Norway, 
And sometimes uh, she'll be translating something, and she's just like, there's just no good word for that in Norwegian. Or it could mean this, and that word could mean that. And so language is a very complicated thing. And so when the translators are translating stuff, they're ha constantly having to make decisions. Now, I have four of my favorites on the screen there. The New Living Translation, the uh, Lexham English Bible Translation, the NIV Translation, and NASB Translation of the Bible. And I grouped them uh, one side and the other. Now, 15 years ago, almost all pastors uh, and translator and, and people would have said, hey, I read the NIV, but I, I do my Bible study in the NASB. Uh, and whereas I read the New Living Translation because it's very modern and smooth and it's a good translation, Pentecostals, which I happen to be Pentecostal, were on the editorial board. Hundreds of scholars work on these Bible translations, right? It's not like one person does it. They debate the words, they discuss it, it's, it's all that stuff. And so the New Living Translation is a very smooth reading translation, quick and easy to understand. The, new, the Lexham English Bible uh, which is made by Logos Bible Software, is a far more, it's more accurate to the language. And so if you're picking apart language and doing language studies, it's, it's, um, it can get you quicker there. You know? but, uh, but you should read different translations. And if when two translations disagree with each other, it's, what I like to do is I like to dig in then a little bit to the Greek and Hebrew. Why did this translator make that decision as opposed to that translation? So anyway... I digress. I can geek out a little bit. I don't want to geek out too hard on you. Um, and so, so that number, you got to get a translation that you can actually read and understand. Now, the next thing you need is you need a consistent time and place to do that. I recommend the morning. Just get it out of the way first thing. <clears throat> it's so important. You want to do it first. You should have a, you should have a, a chair that is comfortable. You should have a desk that maybe has a little pretty flower on it. You, you should have a, a time, a place, and a how. Uh, now, I do down digital. You might have a paper Bible. You might have a, 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 a bookmark, why it might be. And then you need a plan. Um, you, you can go through a, a book of the Bible. You can do the devotions in the Bible. You can do a U version plan, which is that, that first Bible, uh, Bible.com or uh, the U version version of the Bible. They have 30,000 different um, Bible study plans that, that you can do. And so then we want to understand the context. Uh, now, the context is going to show you why it's important. Uh, you know, what would you think if you were the one actually listening to that? And so understand the context. So I believe the scripture is absolutely 100% true in its original language. Okay, we just talked about that language. Language, two smart people can argue about how to translate that Hebrew word. Uh, so smart people can disagree legitimately. Um, so, but I believe in the original language and the original intent in other words, I, I think that whatever Paul meant when speaking to the Corinthians um, does is the same thing that he would be saying to me in that verse. Now, it's okay to make metaphors out of Scripture, uh, uh, but you should know when you're doing it and not base doctrine on a metaphor that you're drawing from Scripture. That's, that's a whole other topic. Let's not go any further into that. Um, so context matters, though. Who are they talking to? What are they hearing? How would the, the audience that was um, there, uh, how would they be understanding it? So if a book of poetry, Psalms, Songs of Solomon, um, they would read and understand that a certain way. Uh, ap apocalyptic books, so books like Ezekiel and the book of Revelation and parts of Daniel, <clears throat> they are read a certain way. So uh, we got to understand how these books are different, how, what the author intended. So... It's a collection of different six, six different books. It is written in different languages on continents and all those places. Oh, and, and so context matters. I think I got ahead of myself here. Now, this is what it would look like if I was studying it years ago. And this is from a years ago study. Now, I would more tend to do that uh, in here. And I think I have a recording so we can look at this together. Since our series is how to study the Bible, we're going to look at it together on my screen. This is the Logos Study Bible, and all that you're looking at on the screen right now is all free. So when we go to Philemon, and we're at the beginning of Philemon here in the, in the Lexham uh, version of the Bible, <clears throat> we get an introduction to the, to the book. 
we get uh, the characters who are here, and our, the characters are going to be, of course, the, the Apostle Paul, and he's writing with uh, Timothy, who sometimes he calls his son Timothy, uh, although Timothy isn't involved for the rest of the letter. And we also have Aphia, which is the sister of Philemon. Onesimus is the slave that has run away. And Aripus is uh, another person who's part of that fellowship. And so, so those are the characters that are here, and you can read all about them and find out what the Bible has to say about this. Um, they talk about the home ministry, and you can just hover over here, and you can see Bible verses. It's just amazing. And they're going to go through verse by verse as a commentary for Philemon. And that is Everything you're seeing right here is totally free. You can just hover and see the Bible verses, read it over here. It's just really amazing and powerful. So there we go. I just wanted to show you on one side of the page is the Bible in my Bible software. And this is a desktop version. There's also an online version that isn't quite as powerful. And then on the other side there is the study Bible. So we're going to look at some things together now that we learn by reading the, the Since our study series. Bible. We're not going to listen to me again, though. And we're going to make sure microphone is on this time because I just had to make an edit because unfortunately I preached a while with no microphone. Uh, Paul, uh, prisoner of Jesus Christ. So I'm highlighting the characters there. Highlighted in yellow all of the names. And I would have done this in a, with a color pencil or a pen in my paper Bible. And then who they are. Um, and then in the blue, I got there what they're doing. They're having church in house. So this is a house church. <clears throat> we found out by reading our study Bible. Uh, that Paul wrote it. It's the shortest letter that he ever wrote. Uh, he's a prisoner of Christ. In other words, he is in Rome right now, and he is in prison, and that's when he meant, met Onesimus. And uh, usually uh, he introduces himself, hey, I'm a, an apostle. That's the authority I'm coming to you with. But in this case, no, actually, uh, he's not pulling rank. He's a letter of friendship. He wants to, to help him out. Now, Philemon uh, was written by Paul. Uh, he, from a Roman prison, we know that, from Anisimus, we already said all these things, I guess. Uh, he met Paul. Now, this is pretty cool, though. I mean, he somehow runs away, meets Paul, gets saved, and it just happens. It's just This is how cool God is. It just happens that Onesimus' um, slave owner was a convert of Paul's. That's pretty cool. Uh, so Paul is about to say, hey, um, you should really say Onesimus. Free. Uh, and so here that is again uh, in, in there. Now, thanks. He says, I always thank God for you. And, oh, and here I'm just showing off that you can put little notes in the Bible software as well. It's just like writing in your margin, but you never run out of room on your computer version, which is why I, I do that. Um, but I wondered here when I was reading it, <clears throat> I wrote down, is Paul buttering him up? And I'm going to read it, and, and I want you to decide. Are, is Paul like, is he laying it on pretty thick? Is he, laying, he said, I thank God, my God, always making mention of you in my prayers, because I hear about your love and faith, which you have towards the Lord Jesus for, and for all the saints. I pray the fellowship of your faith may become effective in the knowledge of every good thing. And I think that Paul has some specific knowledge of a good thing that he's wanting him to get from this. Uh, that is in us for Christ. For I have great joy and encouragement from your love because of the hearts of the saints have been refreshed for through you, my brother. So let's just review where we're at now. We've chosen by a translation that we can understand. We're going to understand the context. And now we're going to slowly ask questions about it. And we're going to pray that God would help us. Okay, so we're going to slowly read it and ask questions of the scripture. Ask questions of the scripture. What is, what is this saying about God? What is this saying? Uh, what is God saying in this to me? Super, super important. Now, there's, uh, this is called the spec method. You could Google this for a, a bigger uh, picking apart of what this is. But in this, is there a sin to be avoided? Is there a promise to be claimed? Is there an example to follow? Is there a command to obey. Is there something to know about God that I got to know about God? Uh, so we're going to read slowly and ask questions and we're going to pray for God to speak to you and we're going to apply what he shows. Because when you are studying the Bible, you should be changing. And if you're not changing, you're not being open to his spirit because you're not that good. There's still lots to do inside of your heart. So verse 8, we pick it up. That is why I am boldly asking a favor 
of you, Philemon. I could demand it. I am an apostle after all in the name of Christ because it is the right thing for you to do. But because of your love, I prefer, dear Philemon, simply to ask you, consider this a request from me, Paul, an old man and a prisoner for the sake of Jesus Christ. So it's, I am your friend. I am an old codger. And you said, pity on this old man. He's laying it on thick. I just know that he is. Um, and I am a prisoner right now for the sake of Christ. Are you a prisoner, Philemon? This is implied. That's not, obviously not in the scripture. I appeal to you to show kindness to my child. He's just laying it on. Onesimus, I became his father in the faith while here in prison. And so, which is really fun um, because uh, this is some Bible candy, man. This is just, I don't know that this will change your life, but it is just so cool how God is that, you know, if, uh, if Philemon is, was saved as a result of Paul and, and now Onesimus has, is Paul's child, that makes you Onimis, Onesimus's brother. So Bible candy, Bible candy. Onesimus in verse 11. He hasn't been much used to you in the past. We're about to see the Bible candy, okay? This is the cool stuff that's just in the Bible. Uh, he, he was not much, worth much to you in the past, but now he is very useful to both of us. Now, if you, in your study Bible, or really any translation of Bible, there's going to be an asterisk there. Uh, it's in the NV, I know for sure. And it's because they put that word Onesimus, his name meant useful. Now think about this, if you have a slave and you're naming your slave, you name him useful. And so then, hey, you should buy this guy because he's useful, he's useful, he's prosperous. Obviously slavery is a, a terrible evil, um, but, he, but Paul is gonna push this on to Philemon now. He hasn't been much use to you. So what he's saying is, hey, Mr. Useful hasn't been much use to you, uh-uh-uh, but now he is because he's a brother in Christ. All right, he's a brother in Christ. And you can unpack that uh, even more. It was a very common slave name because how easier to sell a slave named useful than uh, idiotic, okay, or whatever it might be. And so you can pick apart that word further in the software. We're going to keep on pushing forward there. He hasn't, he, he, he was, he was use, useful. You, you named him useful. He's actually kind of useless, you right? But now he is useful. Uh, but now, so and now here's kind of fun. Formerly, he was useless to you, okay? But now, he's become both useful to you and me. We're picking up all this verse even a little more. We changed translations to bring out um, that, uh, the idea of it being formally, okay? <clears throat> Again, language, different translations is good. He's useful to both you and me. Look at this in the interlinear. Formally, he was useless, but now. Formally, but now. And you know what I love about formally, but now? Uh, now, um, formally is pote in the Greek. And but now is dinoni, dinoni. And so I used to be this, but now I'm this because Jesus made the change in my life. I used to be pote. I was, I was partying and I was smoking the pote. No, I don't know if that works or not. Um, but now, but don't, dinoni. I'm all about the Dinoni. Are you about the Dinoni? But now, the difference that Jesus made in my life. And I just want to tell you that when we're reading a scripture, maybe it can come from a metaphor out of some Bible candy. Maybe we can, we can pull, and we're going to spend the next couple of weeks looking at the book of Philemon. And, uh, but, and we're, going to, we're going to use Bible study tools to study it together. So three weeks we're going to be here. But right now, I want to talk to you about, about this right here. Pote and Dinoni. Are you out there right now and you're still living in the formerly? You have not had an encounter with Christ yet. Maybe you want to have an encounter with Christ, but you don't know how. Uh, I have good news for you. Because right now, you're Pote. You are formerly. But now. But now. Before you were useless. useless. When Jesus got a hold of me, oh, then everything changed. If you want to step into the but now, I'm going to pray with you right now. Um, because Jesus, he's still making the changes in my life through his word. It is so good. He is so awesome. Formally, but now. 
So I'm going to pray a, 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 a button out. And some of our button outs are bigger than others. Am I butt bigger than yours? No, I'm, I don't know where that's going. Formally button. I'm going to pray. And I want you to agree with me and say, Lord, I just want to be yours. I want to be changed. I want to be useful. I want to leave that old life behind. So dear Jesus, I pray for anybody who's listening to me right now. And I have a couple of prayers <clears throat> for today, God. Number one, the purpose of this last uh, 25 minutes or so has been to let people know how cool your word is. It's just so good. It's so good. And it has so much life. And if I could just do what it says, everything in my life would be better because you're just so much smarter than I am. So God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you that you've given us your word. Uh, I got to remember in the next one to rant harder um, how privileged we are to have your word. Only, we're we're uh, only the last few hundred years, normal people even got to read your Bible. I get to jump into Greek and Hebrew and just unlimited. Uh, God, I just thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. So God, I pray that you would take my life. And I know looking in your word, it's all about surrender and it's all about giving you it all. So God, right now I repent of my sin, all of it, God. It's so icky and disgusting. I don't want to be that person anymore. I don't want to hurt your heart. I don't want to hurt my family. I don't want to hurt my wife. I don't want to hurt the people around me, God. I don't want to sin anymore. Forgive me, Jesus, and change my heart that I never do those things again. Lord, and, and I pray, God, that you would use your word to keep on making me more like you. God, that when I gossip, I pray, oh God, that you would convict me of that gossip. When I have an impure thought, oh God, I pray you'd come quickly and convict me of that sin. And that you would show me in your word what sin is for me. And that my life, I would lay that next to your word and I would constantly be becoming more like you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that you pray that prayer with me today. Because that's what it's all about. All in out, uh, pote, I was the formerly pote, but now de no need, de no need. Jesus, thank you for the de no need. May the richly bless you. And Jesus was a rock star.